Hey there guys, welcome to another Railroader video. Today we're just going to kind of go over some tips and tricks to kind of help you along with the game, things that have certainly helped me. Uh, a lot of you may already know a lot of this stuff, uh, but some of you may not or may not have Railroader or be thinking about picking up Railroader to give it a go for yourself. So these things may be helpful. Of course, if I haven't laid out any really good tips here and you know of some, please do let me know. Leave them in the comments below for myself and others to use and enjoy. But first things first, uh, we're in Dillsboro. So this is more east on the map, uh, which I have expanded. And you're going to want to keep passenger operations going nice and smoothly uh, as you can see my passenger network service is at 100 percent so i'm doing just the bare minimum uh one run back and forth per day and that actually helps with your profits overall so let's go ahead and open up the map here i'll show you where i'm at so i've got the interchange at silva and i am working on the bridge from bryson to fontana and so i'm currently running passenger operations from bryson to silva now when you start the game out you're going to start in uh whittier or east whittier more specifically, there's a station here. There's a station here in Ayla. And then I think that's pretty much it until you build your bridge to Bryson, then you're gonna have this station as well. So you're going to want to stop at every station. Uh, and not only that, but stay there a while. So to do that, you would simply control click the coach, uh, click equipment, or I'm sorry, passenger. And then you'll tick the stations you're gonna stop at and where you're going to make it easier so you don't have to click each car because you're gonna to have to load passengers in each and every car, uh, just click copy to couple and it'll copy to every single uh, coach that you have in the lineup. Now, another neat little thing that you can do with passenger operations is make a lot of money with it. So if you pull up to a station, you can uh, hover over the window over here, the ticket office and It'll show you there's no one currently waiting here because I've already got people on board. So there will generally be people already there. But one thing, a neat little trick you can do is if you wait at some of the larger stations. So uh, unlike, let's say, Wilmot or Ayla, which are pretty small towns, those, it doesn't really matter so much. But places like Bryson, Whittier, uh, Dillsboro, Silva, and then later on, of course, down uh, into Andrews. You're going to want to wait. So it's currently 6.40 in the a.m. as you can see on the top right-hand corner of the screen. Now each coach uh, is pretty much full now. So this is a very bad idea that I was trying to, <laughs> to show here. So when I first pulled up, uh, it was a while ago. It was about 30 in-game minutes. So what I'm going to do is skip an hour. So we'll go to settings, wait one hour, and we'll see if any of these cars fill up any more. There we go, 54 out of 60, 56, 58, any more? 59, 60 out of 60, that one is chock full now, so I've got two coaches chock full. My big uh, 84 passenger, that one is increasing as well, so i got 69 passengers, uh -huh. 70 passengers, 71, so on and so on. So do this until these things are completely full, otherwise you are lighting dollar bills on fire. So that's one little neat trick uh, you can do with your passenger service just to make as much money as possible. You really only need to run it once a day, to be honest. Um, but anywho, enough about that. Another thing that is a key uh, performance figure in making them the maximum amount of money and your reputation is the equipment. So let's click this car again, the equipment. We'll go to the car. You can see the condition is 100%. We'll click on this one, car condition, 100%. We'll click on this one, car, 100%. Now, I just bought this uh, Pacific. We'll click on this, condition, 100%. And the tender has its own condition as well. Click on that, 100%. So everything is 100%. So it's going to make the maximum amount of money per uh, depot stops or station stops for passengers. That means you're going to maximize the amount of money that you can make. So for a while, my locomotive here, or the one that I had before this, the uh, the 10 wheeler, uh, it, it was in very poor shape, like 60%. I was just not making very good passenger money. And then I noticed one of my coaches was like 80%. Might have had a few derails here and there and, you know, smacking cars around. That will kill 
your profits. So always make sure that these are tipped up, uh, tippy top as much as possible uh, with passengers for starters uh, at the big stations. So just wait an hour, let them fill on as, as much as they possibly can till they're maxed out. And then of course the condition and that'll maximize your passenger profits. Now, something else you can do regarding passenger stuff, and a lot of this is probably pretty self-explanatory to a lot of players that are already playing and know a lot of stuff that I'm sure I don't know. Uh, but again, this may be helpful for those that may not or may not have the game yet. So something else you can do is set your passenger train to AI. This is generally what I do. I let it do its thing. I do make sure that it's got a clear track, everything's lined, and just let it stop at each station. So this one is ready to go. So I will control click it. I will click orders. Going to click uh, road, reverse, max speed. And it will generally follow the, the road speed that is allowed uh, anyway. So I am lined up here. Let's go ahead and zoom on down to Dillsboro. I lied. We're in Silva. I think I said we we're in Dillsboro earlier. So I'll control T on the map. We're going to jump down to Dillsboro. Make sure we're lined into the station. We are not, so I'm gonna switch that. And then you can put your flare down, which I've already done here. So that's control F. So that means that that passenger train, which is now on AI control, which I don't have to worry about really, except for switches, is gonna stop here. It's gonna go ahead and pick up passengers. It's gonna go ahead and deboard passengers. You can look at the window. It says there's 72 waiting going to various uh, points across the map. So once you've got that done, you know your next station, say my next station is Wilmot. So I'm gonna go ahead and control T on the map to Wilmot. And then I'll go ahead and stick another fuse or flare there as well. So it's the next stop. So we'll go back to Dillsboro. And so basically, once that stop is complete, just pick up your flare. And the train will continue on to the next flare and stop at that station as well. It just makes things a little bit easier uh, controlling these AI passenger trains. I'm going to go ahead and need to put that back down. So also do note when you do this, if you're doing any freight operations or, or switching or something like that, those trains, if they are in AI mode as well, will adhere to a flare. If a flare is in the forward or reverse direction of whatever AI locomotive is near, those trains will stop if they see a flare. So just make sure that you don't have another train uh, on that line or, or specific track, for example, uh, which will make it stop. Another starting tip, and this goes for whether you do sandbox or career. I primarily have been uh, sticking with career uh, personally, uh, but this can pretty much go either way so if you start a new game specifically career uh you're going to get a couple of things for free namely the two locomotives uh coal gondola for your coal chute and some skeleton log cars now i only got four the uh the developer was very kind enough to give me early access to the game to check it out and bring videos to youtube and initially when the game was due to release you were only going to get four of these for free by default which is still free free is free right so i got four i believe you get eight of these bad boys now so these are the four that i have i still just have them i don't use them much now but when you're first starting out i would highly advise to do some logging runs because it's quick easy money you can do numerous times a day without having to worry about loans uh, or any of that so what you'll need to do to get these things going and they will be sitting here by default and you can use them is click your i tab bring up locations uh let's see where is wittier let's see that's not what i want wittier sawmill there you go so what you're going to want to do to use these and make money click locations with your sawmill and then click your tier i'm not going to click this just by example because i don't want to start this and let the company down because i don't plan on doing this presently so you're going to click whatever tier you want to do i'd say stick with one it will expire in three days uh, and then you can begin so once you do that uh, this is not the type of job where cars will spawn at your interchange where you just take them from a to b and then you take empties back from b to a 
This is a different type of service where you have to source the items themselves. So that would be the raw timber or the wood. So, and then of course you would bring them here because this is a sawmill. So once you accept that job, you're gonna have to bring uh, wood products here. So we'll click out of that. Now you would click your car and you're probably wondering, okay, well, what the heck do I do with them? Where do they go? This part doesn't really hold your hand uh, so much. Click on operations. Now loads, or I'm sorry, empties, you're gonna wanna get uh, set up to, geez, which one is this? Which one, that's, that's not right. Yeah, it is. So Connolly Creek, we'll open up the map. This is Connolly Creek up in here, this little uh, branch at this Y here, which we are here. So it's literally just a couple of miles. You can do this back and forth, back and forth. I think one of these, um, one of these spots you pick the loads up is right here. Let's see. So if you go down to this bottom right hand box, the flyout, and it says destination, you see a little gold arrow. You can actually click that and it'll take you to where that is on the map, which is right here. So it's actually very, very close. It's this little uh, stub right there. And what you'll do is bring your train in with the skeleton cars. Uh, let it sit here for, I think, maybe an hour tops, two, maybe, depending on how many you're getting. Uh, and they'll load, and then you're done, and then you take them back. So, obviously, it says empties to here, right? So, you're going to have to set that. And then loads to, that says not set, but they're going to go, let's click back on the map here. Control T. So the loads are going to come back here. This is the Whittier Sawmill locations. Um, geez, I keep forgetting where it's at. Here it is, Whittier Sawmill. It's already on it. So we'll clear that expired contract. So this is it right here, SO1 and, I'm sorry, R1 and SO2. So basically when you bring logs in here, your tags should look like this. If they're grayed out like this, you're not going to get any money for doing any of this. So you are going to need to click it. Go to operations, uh, loads, which once you once you purchase the, the tier or the agreement to bring wood here, then you'll have the, the option to select the sawmill. But empties to, we'll do Connolly Creek L2. Um, now that's the closest spot. You could also go to Bryson. Now if you're starting out, you're not going to have Bryson, so I wouldn't go there anyway because it's going to be too far. Um, you know, just starting out per se. But another neat fact, again, is you can copy to coupled. So we'll control click that. Operations, I've already got it set up right. Connolly Creek L1, which the empties go to to get wood. Copy to coupled, and then they will all be tagged so you don't have to do each and every one. So if you do this enough times, not only do you get paid for bringing timber into the sawmill, but they will start producing products, which generally come out of here. I think this track here as well by the warehouse. Uh, and you'll take those to the interchange, which is literally, when you're starting out, right here. So it's really quick, easy money. It may not be the most fun thing in the world, but when you're starting out and you want to get some new engines, new rolling stock, buy an extra passenger coach, which I would highly recommend, uh, you can do that quick, fast, in a hurry. You'll also get sent empties, which will show up at the interchange overnight, which you'll take right back down to the sawmill stubs as well. So that's just uh, an easy way to make money. Now, another thing that I think is important, and I had to find this out just by trial and error, essentially. I couldn't really find a, a clear answer about it, nor did I ask too much anywhere. But uh, so when you start out in your career, you're gonna get this coal gondola here, which you're gonna have to fill up. So generally what you do is it's going to be empty, I believe. You're going to have to click it and set it to go to the interchange. So you're going to control click it, operations, and you can see I currently have it set uh, loads to east with your coal loader. So that's it right here. This is the chute where you fill up your, uh, your locomotives. And then the empties go to uh, Silva, which is my current um, interchange. Now when you start, there will be Whittier down here. So you just select Whittier, which is basically right through the, uh, the shed back there in the distance. So you take it down there. Once you have the loads to and empty to, empties to set correctly, and that'll go overnight and get filled up with coal and then come back and you bring it in here. 
Now, it tells you how to do that in the tutorial. Thankfully, that's all well and good, but I had an issue. I was getting pretty low. I kept running out to uh, Dillsborough and Silva, and I didn't have any coal shoot out there or any way to get coal, so I was just getting by by the skin of my teeth on some of these runs. And I was getting very low. So if you hover over the car, you can see this one's currently got 28.4 ton of coal left. I was getting pretty low. I think I had like two or three tons. I didn't want to wait until it was completely empty and then take it all the way to the interchange and then wait a night because what if I ran out of coal on all of my engines? Then I would be totally screwed or up the creek, right? So you can take this to the interchange without it being completely empty. All you need to do is grab it and take it there. So control click it again, operations, uh, empties to Silva interchange to Carolina, uh, fuel and coal, I think it's called. And you literally just take it there. Now, just to be safe, click this cycle button a few times in the bottom right, and that'll kind of refresh, um, almost like the way bill or the operation of the car essentially and so i just tried it uh on a wing and a prayer one night and sure enough i you know i hit sleep uh 6 a.m came around and it disappeared and came back and it was chock full of coal again so you do not have to wait till this is empty you can absolutely take this back and get coal without it being empty Another thing, if you are starting out by hitting the I key and say you want a little extra money and you don't want to wait, I am guilty of that. I have very, very little patience in the game and in real life, of course, as well. You can loan money. Now, initially when the game released, uh, you could loan 1000 I think you could loan up to 10000 Now, they recently added a loan 5000 as well, and then there's the payback buttons. Uh, also now i messed up one day because i accidentally clicked loan when i meant to click pay i wish these buttons were actually like a different color or maybe had them separated somehow uh but anyway you can easily loan money if you need to get an extra car hell loan a thousand bucks or however much it costs to get a coach i don't remember at this point and get an extra coach you'll make it back in no time now you can see my current loan is still $17,000, but my max is 42. So that 17 is obviously deducted from that 42,000. The more you loan and the more you pay back and you're in good standing, that maximum loan amount will continue to increase. You can loan uh, quite a bit if you wanted to. You don't have to, but the choice is there. Also note there is an interest payment, just like in real life with regular loans. Uh, the same applies to this as well. So you'll see right above these little uh, buttons here for the pay and loan, you'll see interest payment 640. That was pretty high because I still owed 20,000 a couple of in-game days ago. And the interest payments alone were 800 something something. That's just the interest payment. That's That gets taken out of your daily, or actually it's every couple of days, like this says in three days, 16 hours, and it's 10% of the total loan. That gets taken out automatically. There's nothing you can do about that. The bank has got to get their money. That's got nothing to do with your loan amount. Your loan amount, you have to be responsible for paying back. So say you make an extra thousand, you know, every 48 hours or so, click the uh, pay 1000 bucks, get that down, get that interest payment down and uh, get in good standing. You don't want to get too deep and maybe have to restart and all that or get discouraged with playing, you know, career and whatnot. I loaned out quite a bit when I started just because I wanted some new engines and a couple of extra cars, and I'm definitely getting down into a better standing now. So that option is definitely there for you. All right, so another little neat trick is when it comes to actual operation, uh, just a couple of easy things you can do if you want to take that route. You're Say you're working by yourself, maybe not you know with anybody multiplayer-wise for the time being. Uh, it just makes things a little bit more quicker and smoother operation-wise. So you can, of course, uh, hook up cars in the traditional sense, lace them up, open the angle cock, get the air in the line, uh, get it equalized and all that good stuff. Or there's kind of a, a quick cheat, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the engine, make sure it's selected and in manual. We'll throw it in reverse a bit. We'll give it a little bit of regulator. There we go. 
There we go. And we are hooked up, knuckled up, coupled up. Uh, so you can see the lines are just dangling. The angle cocks are closed. Traditionally, you would need to just grab each one, hook it up, open that angle cock, open that, get the, you know, get the line equalized all throughout the train. And this is a pretty lengthy train as well. So if you've got a couple of cuts you're putting together, you may have to go down the line and do that. One easy way to do it instead of doing it individually is simply holding the shift key and then left clicking on one of the glad hands. And voila, there it goes. So it'll auto connect and auto open the angle cocks, which just makes it a little bit easy if you're trying to shave a couple minutes out of the day, trying to trying to hit that uh, that you know that financial report before oh eight or eighteen hundred hours. Sorry, uh, you just need to shave a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes. That's just an easy tip uh, to do that. You can also do it uh, disconnecting, if I'm not mistaken. So they're connected now. You can hear the compressor running. So I'm gonna hit uh shift and left click again and there we go now we're cut off they are back closed the hoses are disconnected and it's the same deal as um lacing it up another little neat thing which uh i don't know if this is even in the tutorial i just read this online somewhere um as you can see the gradient and the curvature of the track so it'd probably be easier to, to go out on the nose of the engine just for the sake of visibility so we'll hop up here so if you look at the track in front of you and hold your mouse now you can't see my mouse cursor because i have it hidden for recordings and then streaming and whatnot so if you keep your mouse cursor over uh one of the tracks if you hit shift question mark it'll actually show you the curvature and the current grade so this is 0.4 percent so very minimal but it is there so it's it's just a quick press you've actually got to hold shift and the question mark key down at the same time and then you let go and it just disappears that's a neat neat little thing uh, you could do for sure especially once you get out to the western side of the map and you start heading uh, from almond through topton um like this area up in here is some of the, the the most treacherous grade on this branch so something like that may come in handy to know uh maybe when you need, need to give it a little bit more regulator or uh maybe call in an extra pusher engine or something like that now back to the passenger side of things so when i started out playing railroader uh i was being very persnickety when it came to stopping at the actual stations to try and get passengers right i thought that you had to have all the coaches right in front of the the depot to get them loaded i would try to stop at the most perfect point between all the coaches that is not necessary at all if you get at least a tiny tiny bit of one of these coaches uh, on the loading portion of the depot all of your coaches will load not just the one uh, and another thing is a lot of these stations or depots that do have multiple tracks um, such as Dillsboro here you can load on multiple tracks as well I did not know this until just kind of stumbling across this uh, about a week ago now so if you say you bring up your um, we'll close that out I'll control click a coach uh, bring up the passenger tab there and you hover over where you're at you'll see we're currently at Dillsboro so where that yellow is is where loading will happen so say you've got a train blocking one of the lines you simply go to the other line and passengers will still embark and disembark there as well so it doesn't have to be perfectly right in front of a depot just look at where the loading uh, place is to get everything loaded uh, easily one more little neat trick you can do, whether you are in the cab of the locomotive or standing trackside, hell, you could do it across the map, although you wouldn't hear it, maybe a friend would if you're playing multiplayer, is the uh, custom whistle pull. So it tells you how to do this. Your, your, um, uh, your control tab that tells you everything you need to know pretty much about the game. Uh, explains a lot of stuff but I didn't see this until much much later after starting to play so you can hit the H key which is your low or kind of medium pull and then hit H plus shift and that's the full higher pull so that's well and good and easy to do but a neat little trick is so if you hold 
the V key, as in Victor, on the keyboard, and just simply move your mouse up and down gently. It'll it'll do a much more kind of smooth, customized uh, whistle pull, which is pretty neat. Um, you know, just to make it, uh, I guess, a bit more realistic. I don't know, or or hell, just playing however the heck you want to play. Uh, I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. Of course, um, if you know any tips or tricks, let me and everyone else in the comments down below know. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys, see if you have any cool tricks you've kind of picked up along the way as well. But I think that's going to be it uh, for this video. We'll pick up next time with the next playthrough. I think it'll be part six for me where we will complete uh, the bridge to Bryson and we're busy we got a lot of work it's almost like a regular full-time job now so hopefully uh, i'll catch you along in that next part of that series as well but hopefully you found the video uh, helpful and informative and i'll see you next time thanks for watching guys take care